Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I take you behind the scenes as I set up my double header book light in a small office space with big windows. We had to fight the sun and reflections to get these great results. Let's get into it. This shoot was located in the Highland Park area of Dallas. I communicated with my client, Steve, which I'll introduce later on in the video, that I needed a place to park for the duration of the shoot where I could have access to the van and also be close enough to push in. He was able to communicate with the building and actually get me a spot reserved to park throughout the day without any issues. It was covered parking, it was in the loading dock, it was secure, and we had to push in really close um, so it wasn't that difficult. That was really important to get that cleared up because sometimes you could be parked a few blocks away and it doesn't make it easy for you to maneuver. And with a lift gate or a ramp, you could be in a tight position where you have to unload somewhere quickly and then go park for the duration of the shoot and do the same on the way back. So how did I get hired on for this shoot? Steve, which is actually a viewer of the channel, reached out to me and said, hey, I'm coming to Dallas. I wanna know if you're available for these dates and if you wanted to jump on board for this shoot. He wanted to get lighting, grip, and have me on for that position, but also fill in anywhere else that's needed. It's sort of what I call now a one man band plus one. And what it is is someone that does stuff one man band, but they have the budget or the ability to bring someone else on. Normally, Steve would actually rent a lot of the stuff when he comes into town from a company, whether it's getting flown in or shipped in via lens rentals or he finds a local rental house. So he said that it was about the same to just hire me on with the equipment and he has an extra body on site to make things happen. Now you can tell this space wasn't big. It is actually from window on the right hand side to the wall on the left hand side about 14 feet. Now did I measure when I went in there? No, but I actually counted the ceiling tiles and the ceiling tiles are about two feet in uh, on the short end and four feet on the long end. So I was able to just measure up and I know that that's an eight by right there. So we're looking at about 14 feet. Now we wanted to get more depth out of the space as a result of it being small. So what could we do? Well, we shot in the direction of the windows. The windows when open have the infinite amount of depth until there's something in sight. So a building or whatever's outside of the window increasing our depth. So our depth does not stop at the window. So we went ahead and shot in the direction of the window to give us more depth, showcase the skyline that they had around their space. Now there are challenges when dealing with these windows. The biggest one is, as you can see now, reflections. Reflections are going to be tough. You have to fight reflections. And we wanted to possibly use the blinds if there was too much light, because another thing you will be fighting is the outside light overall. So if it's too bright outside, you're going to have problems if you don't have enough output. And then also you increase the output, you do run the risk of making really bad reflections in the glass. So those were some of the factors that we had to deal with. And we were trying to just build up the scene. So on the left-hand side, you actually see a big furniture blanket. And that was actually used to help cut some of the reflections. Also cut some of the noise because there were people in the room immediately next to us. This is the view from behind the cameras. We're running two FX6s. We have the Shogun Ultra monitors for each of them. We did have to wrap the book light quite a bit because we are looking straight into the center camera. And that's why it is so close over here. We did put up a neg sound blanket and reflection reducer right there because that would show up in the window reflections over there. So black usually hides the reflections and then white shows up in the reflections. So we're gonna move on over here. I'm gonna show you the view from the other side. If you see here, you can actually see my reflections. When I get closer, you see my arm and things like that, but the black disappears better. We're running a 600D Pro for the book light, and we have a 1200D on standby to give us more output 
So if it got really bright outside, we could shut off that or turn on that 1200 D to give us some more light. So let me open the Citus Link app and show you the differences between the two. So here's the 1200 off. So it's not as bright. If we needed it, we have it, but we don't need it. So this is just the 600 at 90%. And here's with the 1200 on. Huge difference. What we have is a 300D here with the F10 Fresnel. It is shooting over into the ceiling here to give us a little bit of fill on the subjects. And then we have, like I said, a 1200D and a 600D for the book light. I am running one stand for the book light setup. We have a four or a eight by eight ultra bounce and then an eight by eight silent. So silent half grid. And then we are running the Amaran T2C for a tube light. It is boomed over with the Avenger D600 boom and then we do have hardline power for that if we did run an ultra bounce here like i normally do it would show up as a reflection also the desk is covered up to reduce reflection so if you look here i could probably reveal the desk itself and you would see it because it is a white desk so it's all about reducing reflections this is reducing sound and reflections as well and our subject lands here we even put a blanket on the chair because it is white to reduce the reflection of the chair that you would see in this space so that's it all coming together from this space i'm going to set down the gimbal and i'm going to actually roll through the lights real quick just to show you what they're doing in this space 300 off and then we have the key light off and then the hair light it's not really spilling much you can barely see it you see it hitting the chair and then if we do the fill light it's bringing up some levels and then we do the key light and then if we really need a good punch we could do the 1200d which is a lot of light and that's if the outside was very bright all right uh go ahead and introduce yourself into the camera hello i'm steve richardson with first story films in phoenix arizona steve actually watches the channel he reached out to me online because he was coming to dallas and he said i want to hire you out to come help light some interviews so here we are so let's go ahead and break down the lights so we're going to kill all the lights and here's what we're getting. We're exposing for the outside. We like where we're at for the outside. So I'm gonna introduce the hair light and that's what our hair light is doing. It's just something, but it's not anything crazy. Just a little something happening there. And then what we're doing is we will introduce the fill light. We couldn't use a bounce. So we're doing this, getting a little bit of a fill coming in. And then we're going to turn on our key light. And this is what our key light is doing. Looking really good. And then we'll turn on the hair light right there. You see it's actually making a big difference. And then we'll come in with the fill light. And we could adjust the fill light to be moodier or brighter. So this is radioactive bright. And then this is just a little bit moodier. And everything's coming from above just to avoid reflections looking good now if we wanted to if it was really really bright outside go ahead and close your eyes because we're going to turn on the 1200 and this is how much light we have so if we really wanted to stop it down we could and here's actually the indies on to show you what we could do if we really wanted to the but poor talent not... <laughs> man the poor talent bro but uh that's not what we want to do so i'm going to go ahead and take that out and uh go back to clear on the indies 
and that's kind of where we landed at and of course we didn't dial this in perfectly this is just running through real quick so we give you all an example of what we have going on and fine tune it accordingly now let's take a look at the tighter angle we're going to start with all the lights off and then we're going to introduce the amaran t2c which is our hair light you can see in the false color the impact it's making with just a little bit of pop of light helping bring up the hair and the shoulders in the scene. The next light we're going to turn on is the 300D, and the 300D is the spotlight hitting the ceiling, and that is creating our fill light. So you could see our fill light there. It's at 38%, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the key light on, which is our 600D, and you can see our 600D, how it plays. We have our hair light on and off, and then I'm going to introduce the 300D, which is our fill light, and I'm going to throttle it off and on. So by adjusting the output of that fill light, I could change how dark the shadow side of the face is and give it a darker look and a better ratio for some, and for others, a flat look, which they may like. And this is the 1200D fired up. So that's almost 1800 watts of light blasting our subject way too bright but that could be something that's necessary but it's really hard for them to see and that was the NDs that were fired up to give you that look now the 1200d is off i'll pull those NDs back and we're back to the look we had and what we landed on so we have our book light as our key light we have a 300d with the spotlight giving us our fill and then the t2c for a hair light so just so you guys know this slash here that's happening actually has naturally happened from the sun coming in from the outside we knew it was going to happen because we used a sun seeker app to actually see everything that's going on so it has a nice look so when you turn everything off it has a nice little glow and effect which looks really good and Overall, it's coming together. We started out the day thinking we we're going to have really, really bright sun all day. Ended up not happening, but we were prepared with the 1200 just in case that happened. So what's a takeaway from this shoot? Well, one of the challenges we faced was how perfect did we want to get the shot? And that's something that we as shooters always come across, like how perfect can we get it? What can we do to keep improving? One of the things that holds us back is time budget and then manpower to create the perfect scene and sometimes you have to meet somewhere in the middle and say well i'll let this go and we can do this versus if we were up against a white wall what if we shot against the white wall would that be a better shot or what we got currently let me know what you think but all that comes together and we find that sweet spot to get good results now this isn't a commercial that will be played on national tv or even broadcast out this is semi-internal and it will be directed at certain individuals. This was my first time working with Steve and it was amazing. We had a good time. We worked well together. And surprisingly, some of the things that he added to his kit or wants to add to his kit are the result of him watching the channel, which is pretty cool to hear and see that I have that kind of uh, inspiration for others to grow their skills, grow their equipment and they actually look to me uh, for input and advice. So that was really awesome. Let me know what you guys think of the shoot overall, how we handled everything. I really want to know down in the comments. Big thank you to all the supporters of the channel, everyone that comments, likes, shares the content. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.